Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Taz Olson here, and uh, I recently put up a video. I titled it Deep Freeze. It was a basketball video on a tournament that went on at my school, and uh, at one point I did this bullet text effect. Um, let's just turn off the audio. Uh, as you can see it here, and I'm going to show you how to do this. So basically, yeah, it comes in really fast, and it slowly comes through, like it slowly moves, and then it goes out. It's a very simple effect, and I'm going to show you how to do it. It's going to take, like, 20 seconds. So, you come in here, and, yeah, let's just go here. Go media generators, text, uh, let's just go with sample text. You can, if you have any presets or whatever you want. You can use those. Um, let's go Taz Olson. Then I'm going to show you a more advanced method of doing it in a second. And the same strategy, it's pretty simple to learn. And it can be applied to like any uh, like video editor that has such capabilities. It's very simple. So, yeah, it looks good to me. Um, Let's just give this a quick gradient background. Make it not look so basic. Yeah, it looks better. Nice, quick, easy gradient in the background. And uh, so we go into the event pan crop position and um, depends on how fast you want your bullet text to go let's move forward one two three frames and pick a spot that we want it to start at and let's have it go straight in the center click this and it will only move on the horizontal axis click it again it will only move on the y axis click it again it goes back to all I just want it to move on the horizontal axis. Uh, so let's bring it here. Now you don't want it to last like too long because it kind of ruins the effect. And let's bring it forward like two seconds. Move it over here. And then let's go one, two, three frames over move it completely out of frame. And then here, let's move it completely out of frame this way. So basically what's happening now is... Even that's going a little... staying a little too long. Uh, seeing as we don't need it beyond here, let's just cut it off right there. Let's cut this shorter. Uh, let's make it last like a second ish. And let's cut it right there. So it's very simple, it's already happening. Um, you may wish to, you know, add a few. Uh, like keyframe points in there. Actually, let's make this extend a f little bit so you can see the ending of it. All right, so it's starting to take a little long. Uh, I think four would be a nice magic number. Four keyframes. I'm also operating in 30 frames per second, so you know, keep that in mind as you pay attention to such things. And how we get it to move faster, or to look like it moves faster, let's go video effects. Uh, pretty simple, linear, var bl sorry, linear blur, horizontal, medium, works very well. Start there, same process, one, two, three, four. And let's bring this down to zero. And 
me make it, you know, let's not bother with changing it. Let's just change this to a slow transition. So it takes longer, uh, like it takes longer near the beginning and it's faster at the end. So it looks a little bit like it's going faster the entire time. And let's do the same thing for keyframes. Change this one to a fast so it goes the exact opposite way. And let's go back to horizontal medium or you could set whatever number you want. It works that way too. Quickly render it. It's looking good already. Simple, simple, simple. But, you know, that's not very much of a tutorial. Let's also go into, um, there's a motion blur if you have the new blue uh, plugin, which is very nice. You could use the horizontal blur. And uh, let's make the blend like, I won't blend up. You can change the blur around. Um, yeah, let's see. I guess horizontal blur in itself is really, uh, nice and good. We can, yeah, let's turn that one off. It's the exact same thing, you know, set the blur down to zero, make this slow. It's the exact same uh, strategy, it's just, you know. Um, bring this up to 100, because that was really the only difference we even made. Change this to a fast keyframe. And it's a similar effect. As soon as you're moving fast, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's not as preferable as the linear blur one, but it still works very nicely. And would work. Uh, the motion blur is more if you plan to use this with something other than text or generated media, like an actual character. If you wanted to like zoom into a scene on a movie or whatever, uh, you'd probably want to go with the motion blur. It looks much better. You can also change the direction of it. Quite simple. I guess I could show you again, you know, direction. Uh, yeah, direction and the angle, which is, yeah, pretty self-explanatory, the angle and direction. Direction is basically like the X offset and Y offset and stuff like that. But anyway, we got that. But, you know what, that seems like a kind of lame tutorial to use. Uh, I don't know why this audio track is in here. Let's make a new video track. Put this on here. and Because I want to make this a 3D source alpha tra layer. Which, essentially, it's the exact same thing as a, uh, like a source alpha. But this one it operates in 3D, which I will show you in a second. Let that render out. Okay, so what we want to do here, we want to click on the track motion, and hmm, yeah, let's just bring all this junk. Bring this all. I've already done the video and I'm not going to save anything, so it doesn't really need to be worried about. Move this all to the beginning of the composition. Make it nice and simple. And still rendered. Now what this is going to do, uh, track motion. Uh, let's move it. Yeah, let's move it into here. So we start with this, and we're going to make this a 3D uh, motion tracker, which you will understand in a second. Um, and you'll notice here, you know, let's just go to here. I can take the rotation and I can make it into like a 3D feel. Um, you know, bring this out a bit. Uh, rotate it 
down maybe yeah it's looking good bring it up I like that and let's make it again those uh four pre uh yeah those four keyframes to the beginning and uh let's let's just completely get rid of uh these keyframes because we're going to do them in the track motion section. And we're going to keep the linear blur on so it's still going to operate that way but it's just going to be a little different. And uh, you know for first keyframe let's also rotate it like all the way around so it comes in sort of like all 3D orb like um, down a bit ah so let's uh, see how this is looking it's looking okay Bring the. Uh, I'm thinking like bring this up. Not that one. Um, come on. Trying to get the right one to highlight. Which is very difficult. There we go. seeing as this like just sort of like blurs out we don't want that we're going to go to the end here one two three four one two three four there we go we're going to animate this so uh Bring this over here. We don't want a huge difference, I guess, because we want sort of like that slow mo moving thing. So, let's see what that looks like. No, that's a little too much motion. And... That's looking good. And we can also scale things. I guess I should mention that by just grabbing this corner here and dragging and last keyframe let's just remake this keyframe one two three four Zoom it off and zoom it out. And drop its height, or drop its uh, Y position a lot. I'm starting to like this.
it's looking pretty decent. Uh, I will mention this does work better in After Effects, and I will soon do an After Effects tutorial on this. But yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with that. You know, it sort of moves slowly. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Uh, until next time, my name is Tazzles, and I'm signing off. Bye.